Hi, this is Kevin with Garrison Dental Solutions, and we're taking a look at the top five questions that we get asked about sectional matrix systems. The first one is the most commonly asked question, and it is the one that uh, is the most technique sensitive. It's how do I do a back-to-back -back restoration? One where you've got an MO up against a DO. Um, how do you do that the most efficient, effective, and predictable way? So I'm going to show you uh, two different ways to do that today. Let's take a look at this picture here. The one that people uh, assume is the way that you do it is what you're seeing on your screen right now, where you have all of the bands in place, all of the wedges, you've got all the hardware in there. Um, it can be done. That is the more difficult way to go. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll walk through that here a minute on the type of dot and then uh, we can delve into uh, an alternative method of tackling that type of restoration. So uh, the first thing here, um, we're going to be taking a look specifically at this MO and DO. Forget that this is an MOD all the way across. We're just going to look at, uh, that complicates things even further. So let's just stick to a back-to-back -back here and uh, pretend that that MO is not there. So first things first is uh, to do them back-to-back -back and to have all of that material in there, um, it's a little hard to use the matrix bands with the tabs on them. So I've actually grabbed some of our um, uh, they're SXR matrix bands without the tabs on them because that tab, of course, is going to be right in the way of the center of that interproximal space where you're trying to, to work. So um, we can't have that. So we're going to use these regular bands or, or these straighter bands here. So uh, first step, of course, is going to be to place both bands. I'm going to grab the distal band and place that one first. I'm just going to grab it by a corner of the band like that and uh, slide it into position. Of course, placement of the matrix bands, um, the, you know, the, the space should be wide open. There should be no contact in there when you're doing a back-to-back -back like this because you're dealing with so much decay. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but it is a little tricky to get both bands in place at the same time. So do whatever you have to do to get them in there back-to-back -back like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold a finger very firmly on top of those as you wedge because it's the wedge is going to try to push those bands out of position. So you're really going to need to hold them down. So here you've got both bands in place. They're wedged so you have a seal at the bottom of the box. Um, and you can see based on where the ends of these bands are, it would be extremely difficult to place a ring now. So before you go to place the ring, you need to get these things out of the way. Push those tips out of the way as far as you can so that you've got room to set that ring in there. I'm going to go ahead and grab the, uh, this is the taller of the two fusion rings, this one, uh, the orange tip one, and I'm going to place that directly down in between. I may have to do a little finagling to get it down between all of those matrix bands. That's why this is so difficult to do them at the same time like this. Very difficult to place that ring when it's in somebody's mouth and you're trying to get it between those matrix bands. So we've got it in place. So we are separating the teeth um, we've got a decent uh, buckle and lingual seal on the matrix band. You are still going to fill these one at a time. Um, you're going to, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you start with. You want to make sure that you've approximated the midline of where you want those two teeth to meet up. You're going to fill that restoration, uh, in this case the DO, you're going to fill that one all the way up and then burnish aggressively against it before filling. So uh, this is a less sure way of 
getting a contact because you're dealing with you know two thicknesses of matrix band in there um, it is uh, it is not how I would recommend doing it but that is what people uh, seem to think that, that they want to do. I'm going to show you alternatively here what I think is a better, more conservative approach that is going to uh, give you more predictability. So let's undo this quick a second. All right, so we got that out of the way. Let's take a look at this picture here a minute. Uh, we want to look at a case that uh, is more indicative of the way I think you want to do this. Um, this case came to us from uh, Dr. Mike Malone. He's a lecturer uh, and writes articles and, and teaches around the country. And he sent us this case, and I think it's a really good example of uh, a good way to approach a complex case. So as you see here, we've got a lot going on. We've got one, two back-to-back uh, -back situations, and then uh, he's actually doing crowns on those, uh, or onlays, I should say, on those back two on the two molars there, so uh, you'll see that in the final picture. But uh, he's got the wedges in there um, during his prep phase, so that he doesn't tear up the um, uh, doesn't tear up the rubber dam um, and create leakage. But then also he st he's starts to get some tooth movement, of course, so that uh, makes band placement a little easier and is going to help aid his ability to get a tight contact. So. Um, if we go on to this next picture here a minute, this is where a little bit of conservatism comes into play nicely. Um, this is what we're going to do on the type of knot here in a second. Um, he's putting the distal bands right in a line there, you can see, and then has them wedged off so he seals the bottom of the box. And he is going to fill just the distal restoration on each of these teeth. Now, you don't need the rings in place at this point because you're not trying to get that added separation. All you're trying to do is seal the gingival portion of the band so you don't get leakage in the bottom of the box. And then you can fill that um, easily and then remove the bands and the wedges and you've got a, a wide open space there that you can finish that distal nicely, um, sculpt the marginal ridge a little bit if you want with some rotary instrumentation and nothing is, uh, no opposing dentition is in your way to interfere. So once you have completed the distals, you put in the bands uh, again on the mesials, wedge it and put two rings on to, uh, to get that extra separation. Um, so this is where the where the rings come into play to give you the separation to seal the matrix band and then you can burnish that band against the already completed distal restoration and ensure that you have a really nice contact that way. Let's take a look at the end of this case. You can see what a what a fantastic case, uh, you know, great result here, and that's going to serve that patient for a long time. So um, it's a little more conservative, might take you a second longer to do, but your results, you're going to be more happy uh, with those results. So let's go back to the type of knot here, and I actually have this tooth prepped out fairly similarly to what uh, Dr. Malone had. Now, I'm not going to line all that stuff up the same way here. We're going to kind of uh, fast forward, if you will. Now, when doing these, if you're not doing them both sides at the same time, you can use the, use the tabbed bands. That's not a problem because uh, the tab is not going to be interfering here. We'll show you that here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and in this case, I think you are, as you work, you're going to want to wedge each one of these things off so it doesn't uh, move on you as you're placing the next band. So we're going to wedge that, uh, move forward one. Now I'm just wedging from the buckle on here. Um, depending on which direction the the restoration tends towards, you're going to wedge maybe from the lingual instead. So we line up the second one, we wedge that, and then we can do our third one here. Grab another wedge out of the kit. 
we're going to wedge that one. That's a little tighter on that. Okay, so now again, these little tabs, you can flip those out of the way in this case because you're not working on the mesial on the back side, so that's fine. So now you would do the same uh, sort of technique where you're going to come in and you're going to push, uh, manipulate that band so it's approximating the midline of where you want it. Just push it back over, um, fill, cure, and then you can finish the back sides of all of those. Now, depending on your patient, you may not be able to uh, put all the rings in that you may want. Um, of course, the kit comes with two rings. I'm just going to use these same bands over again here and flip them around. So we've got, let's start here. That wedged off. I'm going to reuse these bands. We're going to save the environment here a little bit while we're fixing these teeth. Wedge that off. And then I'm going to show you uh, what I'm talking about with the um, challenge of putting uh, multiple rings in place. Okay, so then we've got this guy in place. Last one. Hold the finger on there. Wedge it off. Okay, so now we, we're wedged off in that scenario. Now, if you were to, uh, let me grab another ring here. If you were to play, you always start on the mesial, place the most mesial uh, or, or anterior ring first. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Now I've got no problem getting ring number two in. I've got plenty of room. To, uh, I can work here quite easily on this. This now remember, this one is filled already. We've got this one open yet, the mesial here on the bicuspid. We've got the mesial here on the molar um, that we're filling. Now, depending on the patient and the size of the teeth, you may or may not be able to put that third ring in. You see what happened right there? I put the third ring on, and now I'm actually covering. I need to be working right down in here and I can't even see that so um, in this scenario with this particular these size teeth I would have to do this okay now I'm gonna burnish this over to uh, a contact against this distal one that's already filled and against this distal one that's already filled I'm gonna go ahead and fill those two okay complete those restorations and then I can take this ring move it back one and do this mesial, burnish this mesial up against the distal that's already been filled. So that way you're, you're getting your separation, okay? You're sealing the band, you're, you're getting this extra separation in there so that you can get the tight contact even when you're doing the quadrant. There's just not, it's not possible most of the time to stack up three rings. Um, I know that first photo I showed you, that happened to be a case where the doctor based on the size of the dentition, he was able to get those three rings in there, um, but that's that's not always going to be the case. So again, um, I think the, the desire a lot of times is to place both bands, put a wedge in between there and a ring and do both of those things at the same time. That is a more challenging way to go. I think you're uh, more likely to be successful, a more predictable outcome, if you fill the distals first without the ring in place, Remove those bands and wedges, finish those restorations, then move over and do the mesial, uh, utilizing your rings so that you get the extra separation you need for a tight contact. So, hey, thanks for tuning in, and we'll be tackling these top five questions one at a time, so uh, keep a lookout for the next video.